Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be talking about an upcoming major storm that could bring some severe weather down there for the Deep South, and then also a major snowstorm for the interior eastern United States. We're going to get into that in just a moment. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, I want to know, do you think that there will be a major snowstorm on the interior eastern United States? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Let's get straight into things, and first things first, I want to talk about that severe weather, actually, because we have been having some concerning severe weather, obviously, the past couple of weeks, so we want to pay pretty close attention to this. Now, we do have a general thunderstorm risk there for the lighter green region there that you can see surrounding all of those darker shades. That darker green is our marginal severe weather risk, and that's where you start to get a little bit more of it. Uh, that's where we expect some severe weather reports to come in. That yellow region is where it begins to get a little bit scattered in, so you're going to want to really pay close attention, especially considering there is a chance for tornadoes today. We'll talk about that in a moment. And then our enhanced risk area, which is that orange area in between Arkansas, Mississippi, Alabama, and then also including Tennessee. A lot of the areas that saw severe weather just a few days ago. Now here is that damaging wind outlook, and as you can see, we have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there in the green. We have a 15% chance there in the yellow, and then a 30% chance there in the red, and we also have a significant hatched region, which is that hatched area in the red. That means that there's a chance for extra damaging wind, basically, even more uh, extreme there than typical severe winds. Now our hail risk area is the same thing, it's just a little bit further south west with that red 30% chance of region and we do have a hatched area for two inch plus diameter hail to be possible within there and then our tornado risk we have a two percent in the green five percent in the brown ten percent chance there in the yellow and we do have a hatched area again which indicates large damaging tornadoes ef2 and above will be possible throughout the day today all right now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to talk about the modeled guidance for the severe weather and then we're going to break down that potential snowstorm in just a moment All right, now here we are taking a look at that model of guidance. And first things first, the high temperatures right out the gates. We have very high temperatures, I guess upper 70s mostly for most of these regions, and then 80s, lower 80s, mid 80s for a lot of these regions as well. So it is going to be piping hot for some of those regions for this time of year. Uh, definitely sufficient for severe weather. And then we have upper 60s, lower 70s in the dew points, which is going to be a good enough moisture there for severe weather development. Also, also as we take a look at that cape, we have... 2,000 to 3,000 Cape, even as high as 3,500 possible throughout the day today, which is actually quite large. That's why we have an enhanced risk, because there's a considerable amount of that Cape, which, by the way, stands for Convective Available Potential Energy, and you can look at that basically as thunderstorm food. It eats us up, and that's what helps it grow, uh, and then that Cape will lower as those thunderstorms develop and use up that Cape. That's kind of how it works. Now, what we're going to do here in a moment is we're going to take a look at some of those other parameters, uh, such as our simulated radar, and then we're also going to take a look at the t significant tornado parameter for a portion of that as well. And then we're going to begin to break down that potential snowstorm. Now, here we are taking a look at that HRRR model here, and as you can see, we're taking a look at the simulated radar here, and there will be some thunderstorms here throughout the morning. This is at about 1 p.m. today, so you can see there will already be some thunderstorms. This is not our main area with the threat of severe weather. Actually, as we move towards about, this is probably about 3 p.m. here. Again, Saturday, March 27th, obviously today from the time I'm making this video. There will begin to be some of these more potent thunderstorms there for northern Mississippi there throughout Tennessee. And they've hit a little bit earlier than this frame uh, for Arkansas as well. They will extend up and through portions of Missouri, potentially Kentucky, southern Illinois, southern Indiana as well. Uh, let's look at that significant tornado parameter, and this is on the same frame. So as you can see, we have anywhere from about a, well, in the yellows and reds, it's where we're at about two to maybe perhaps four or five there on the significant tornado parameter, which is what we'd consider moderate there. But as we move towards approximately 7 or 8 p.m. here, that's when we begin to see the much higher amounts, actually. We get, we get into those pinks and purples. That's where we're at anywhere from about six to ten on this scale. And we actually have a maximum of 14.3 which is not low at all, by the way. That's breaking the scale here. So there is going to be a pretty decent chance for some large damaging tornadoes throughout the day today. You're going to want to pay close attention to your NOAA radio first off, which we have links for that in the description where you can check those out and buy those today. I highly recommend that, obviously, for anybody, anywhere. Yeah, pretty much everybody. 
uh, if you don't already have one. But you're also going to want to just pay attention to those warnings, watches, and advisories straight from your phone. Uh, you can check that out at the National Weather Service's website there, obviously. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. And we're going to take, again, another look at that simulated radar. We're going to close that out, and then we're going to talk about that potential upcoming snowstorm in just a moment. All right, now here we are taking a look at the simulated radar, and that's at the same frame as that significant tornado parameter frame we were just taking a look at a moment ago. So about 7 p.m. here or 8 p.m. on Saturday here, March 27th. As you can see, these are looking like supercells there on the southern end, more embedded in, uh, in general. But we see Arkansas starting to get some of those, northern Alabama by this point. So really uh, going to be a pretty large threat for tornadoes. And as we move maybe towards about 10 p.m. there, you can see it's the same story. We're seeing a lot of the supercell type structures, especially there for Arkansas, northern Mississippi. Uh, but generally, the whole region here uh, is expecting those types of storms to be possible throughout the day today. Now, as we move towards about 2 p.m. tomorrow, we're just going to take a look at a simulated radar here. Uh, but we're not taking a look mostly at severe weather by this point. We're taking a look mostly uh, at this storm system moving through. Could bring some flooding, could bring some severe weather, but I also want to draw your attention to that trough moving in. Look at the Great Lakes. You can tell we have a big trough moving in as well. Uh, expect some severe weather to be possible tomorrow for Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Kentucky. I'm going to talk more about that in tomorrow's video once it's the day one outlook. We will take a look at that, but we are expecting some severe weather. So stay tuned. Tune in tomorrow. We're going to be talking about that threat. We do expect some back-end snowfall to be possible there in between Pennsylvania, New York, possibly the New England states as well as this trough moves in. That's at about 1 or 2 a.m. there on Monday, March 29th. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to talk about that potential major snowstorm in just a moment as that second trough rolls through in just a moment. Now, here we are taking a look at that major snowstorm that is possible. Uh, it's close to hours 100 and a little bit beyond there. So we would consider this about moderate range for a snowstorm. It's pretty close. That is going to occur on April 1st. I'm sure a lot of people are going to think it's an April Fool's joke, but it is absolutely not a joke. Uh, this is something that legitimately could be occurring uh, very soon. So this is in the PM hours there of Tuesday, March 30th. Let's just move this towards about March 31st at perhaps about 2 p.m. or so. Uh, and as you can see, a storm system moves up into the eastern seaboard in the Gulf states as well and you can see a massive trough moving in behind it that is going to bring a significant amount of cold air that's what we talked about in yesterday's video you can obviously check that out today uh, but by the time we're reaching about 2 a.m there on April 1st so starting out right with April Fool's Day uh, but not a joke again like I said we see a low pressure center offshore of the east coast this is a weaker nor'easter and this will bring potentially some snowfall to the eastern uh, interior eastern United States there I'm going to be uploading a Patreon post today, breaking down. I'm going to be including the snowfall outlook from some of these models on that post. So if you want to join the Patreon page today, it's very cheap, uh, cheaper than the price of a coffee. You can check that out today. We upload really cool posts over there. Uh, so I'm going to be making a post on that Patreon page about this that you can check out today, uh, going a little bit more in depth. So as we can see, light to moderate to even some heavier snowfall there. It's going to make its way from the Smoky Mountains all the way up through portions of Kentucky, Virginia, West Virginia, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Maryland, New York, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. So the entire interior United States, this could bring inches and inches of snow, possibly even some major snowfall accumulation here on April 1st. So we're going to be watching for that. Obviously, like I said, the Patreon post will have that total snowfall map. Let's just move this forward towards about perhaps 12 p.m. there on Thursday, April 1st. And as you can see, a 997 millibar low pressure center is located offshore of Maine there by that point. A moderate nor'easter by this point will be bringing some moderate to heavy snowfall there for eastern Pennsylvania, northern New Jersey, portions of New York, Massachusetts, Vermont, New Hampshire, and Maine. Also some freezing rain potentially as well. We're going to need to move closer to the storm before we can say for certain, but this does appear to be a potentially major snowstorm, like I said. By the time we're reaching about 3 p.m. on Thursday, you can see this one has moved up onshore to Maine as a 994 millibar low pressure center, still bringing snowfall widespread for the New England states. And then by the time we reach about 2 p.m. on April 2nd, this one will have moved out fully by that point. Now, the one thing I do want to mention, though, is that major cooldown we talked about yesterday. Uh, it's looking even more major as it reaches the eastern seaboard by April 2nd. Look at that. Anywhere from about 15 to 20 degrees below normal temperatures for the entire eastern seaboard. And those low temperatures here, as you can see, uh, are very cold. But I did just April fool you guys because this is actually the high temperatures. 
take a look at that. It looks more like low temperatures, though, so I knew I could get away with that joke. But look at that. 40s and 30s and 20s, even teens up there for the New England states as the high temperatures here on Friday, April 2nd. What will those low temperatures actually look like? Take a look at this. 30s, teens, and even single digits. Widespread 20s throughout the northeastern United States. Widespread throughout the eastern United States. Uh, hard freezes for a lot of these regions, even Georgia, South Carolina, Alabama. I hope nobody has planted their plants yet because this is looking like it could be a considerable Arctic blast there like I mentioned yesterday. Anyway, for our confidence tab with everything we've talked about today, we're at a 3 out of 6. We're about middle of the pack here with as far as where our confidence is. Uh, we've talked about some longer range things here in today's video, so we're going to take it with a grain of salt. We're going to work our way through this over the coming days and break it down with you guys. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, do you think a major cooldown will occur? And Marion uh, Gabriel, I'm sorry if I'm saying your name wrong, said, I think this cooldown will occur. However, I do not think it will last long. And I don't either. I think that we're going to see a warm up after that cooldown. So thankfully, that'll be a three day maximum cooldown, hopefully. Uh, especially with those major below normal temperatures, and that should come back to normalcy shortly thereafter. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our platinum patrons, Property Damage, John Ben Benick, James Wade, Doby Nagel, Alan Blemo, Adam S., Lur the Pan, Donna Carnes, Cameron Marshall, and Aiden Mattis, alongside our diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Alan Sherry, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harley, Michael Cotalesa, Michael Buell, Catbite, Charles Stinnett, Kellen Manhart, It's J, Cindy Klein, Mark J, Luke Vallejo, Garys, and John Quilisi. If you would like to be a part of this patron end screen of the day, you can do so by joining our very exciting Patreon page in the description and in the pinned comments down below. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share with your friends, family, and social media. And we'll see you guys in the next video.